Hey everybody, welcome back to Owl Creek. I'm Cody. Today I'm out here with the rabbits and I'm gonna be ripping off this old water system. It is winter time here in central Indiana and it looks like winter has finally got here. It's been late, been pretty warm all winter so I haven't really made this a priority. But I'm going to rip this off like I said and install a circulating system to keep this from freezing. And of course I'm out here with my main man Dayton. Say hi buddy. Hi. Nothing else, just that? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get busy on this and I will show you all of the stuff that I'm gonna build this with and all of the links will be down below in my Amazon affiliate store. So any of this that you need for your system, you could find there. All right, buddy, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump this water out and then we're gonna start ripping all this off right here. I always zip tie my hoses onto these water nipples just to make sure that they don't end up falling off and causing a water leak. All right, so now that we got that old system removed, we're gonna reuse as much of it as we can just to save on the cost of having to buy new pipe and everything. So what we're gonna do is actually attach into the old system and run it down and just make one continuous loop. That way it will pump. It's gonna come down, pump, go across the bottom, and then it's actually gonna go over and back across the bottom of the lower cages, and then hopefully pump up and into my five gallon bucket. Okay, so as I attach these, right now I'm just gonna go ahead and press them on, but like I just cut off, like you just saw, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie these later just to make sure, especially with a, a system that's got a pump on it, that I don't have any big leaks. All right, now all these fittings, if you can see these barbs right here, this is just a plastic, plastic fitting that's just uh, barbed. The line fits over it, you press it up on there. It's kind of hard to press up on there, which is what you want. Okay, so after I press the top part on, I'm just going to use this T section right here. I'm gonna put a short piece of hose going to my water nipple. That way it gets the heat from my bucket above. And then I'm gonna continue on with this bottom fitting right here to the rest of my water system. Then just slide your water nipple on. Then your water nipple just connects the spring connects above like this. It just kind of goes down over the cage. Okay, just like that. Now I will continue, like I said, off this bottom fitting and continue on to the rest of the water system. All right, now for the last piece is just to send it back up top to my bucket. Okay, so for right now, what I'm gonna do is just to make sure that this system works, I'm going to actually just kind of drop the hose back in through the top of this bucket. And then later on, once I know that the pump is good enough and strong enough to pump all the way through this, I will go ahead and drill a hole and let it recirculate that way. Okay, so then that's the entire circulating system. And I already have a tank heater that I've been using. One thing about this heater that I bought, a cheap one off of Amazon, is this is what it was. Um, like I said, there will be a link to this down in the description below. But 
if you don't keep it topped off with water, it does start to melt. So I'm going to try to find a different heater actually for it because this unit, it's got a minimum setting of uh, 70 degrees and I don't care to have the water set at 70 degrees. I don't need that. I just need it warm enough to not freeze. So I will be replacing this, but I'll also put a link to the replacement that I end up buying for that. And uh, hopefully it'll work out just a little bit better. Okay, and I'm also putting this clear hose on here and I'm gonna run this up the side of my bucket. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna be a level indicator. As the water comes down in the bucket and gets lower, it will also do that in the hose. Just that way, I don't have to climb up here and look in the lid all the time to see how full this bucket is. Okay, this is the pump that I'm gonna be using. Placo, Placo, however you say it, submersible water pump. It's rated at a uh, 95 gallon per hour with a head of three feet. So it may just be actually undersized for what I need. I guess I'll plug it in and see. Hopefully it works. Okay, so now I'm gonna get this thing plugged in and uh, see if this pump is gonna be big enough to do what I need to. Is it working? Daddy, did that work? Yep, perfect. It works, except, you know what I didn't think about? This one right here. This is squirting water. <laughs> Let me just give you a better view of what I've got going on up here. Water trickling out right there. And this looks like it's holding, it's not leaking now. I'll probably have to go ahead and end up removing that. I should have thought about that. That's not gonna work for a pressurized system like this. Guess it was a good thought. Now, my thought is for this here, kind of like I was saying earlier, is this circulates. It's gonna carry the heat through the lines and then hopefully that heat will be enough to keep this little section right here warm that won't circulate and to keep that nipple warm enough. All right, so that's it for the water system. Now all I have to do is go through here, kind of secure this line up behind me, how you see it drooping right there. And then it's all finished. So thanks for watching. So this system will work for rabbits, uh, many other animals that you keep caged like this that can drink off water nipples, uh, chickens, whatever, if you have a circulating system for your chickens. And uh, hopefully it helps get through the rest of winter here. So if you haven't already, go down there, hit that like button down below if you would for me, and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.